All right, everyone. So welcome back to another update of Sir Metal. So I just wanted to show what I've been up to. So the main goal uh, for the next things I wanted to do was to be able to make a simple uh, light mapper. Uh, nothing polished or anything, just basically uh, to learn it, to how to do it, basic, get the basic functionality in and then have it available, right? So basically package it up in a way that is usable enough in the engine. Then whenever I need extra functionality, I will push it forward, polish it and so on. So the first things I wanted to do was do some basic ray tracing and see, okay, how do we actually do ray tracing in metal? And the first things I did was this one, which is super basic. It's basically just shooting shadow rays or uh, re hitting the sky, basically. So as soon as it runs, see, so it starts converging. It's very simple, very basic. Uh, and it's using the old metal, sorry, the old ray tracing API, the one coming with NPS, metal performance shaders. Uh, which is very flexible, uh, it's very good if you want to make an actual ray tracer, uh, but it requires more shaders, uh, dispatches, etc. So later I actually working on the new uh, ray tracing API uh, that Apple released, I think earlier this year at uh, WWDC, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I found a video from WWDC 2020 talking about this, so and I think it requires Big Sur, so, um, but it's very much closer and similar to uh, how it works in Vulkan and DX. So you can shoot multiple rays from your shader, do multiple intersection and so on. Uh, but uh, after messing around with that a little bit, the next things I needed for the line mapper was to be able to load data properly into the engine, uh, not hard coded OBJ has been so far. So I decided to or with GLTF, that's the main way the, the engine is going to ingest data for now. I mean, an unprocessed data, then later on it's going to read processed data, which is going to be compiled by resource compiler, but for raw data, uh, that's GLTF that I'm going to use. So uh, that's the second sample that we have, the number four. As soon as it runs. There we go, so it's loading the data, and that's it, it's, it's very basic. Uh, I made it in Blender, I didn't even smooth the normals. But as you can see, I can load uh, geometries, I can load textures on the plane and the cone. Also, these spheres is moved by a transform, by a parent, so it's able to handle hierarchy properly. Um, there is a per object transform and so on. And the main other things that in this sample is that it's using argument buffer, as you can see from the title. Uh, so basically that allows me to go bindless everything. I even went bindless uh, with the index buffer, which I don't necessarily recommend uh, because you're going to lose the vertex, the post vertex cache uh, reuse basically, which is not great. Uh, but I just in this sample, I just basically went full bindless for both textures and every single buffer. And um, just as an experiment, but basically that's working. So that's basically allow me to feed data to the ray tracer properly. So the next step uh, is not even a, a sample yet. I was still working on uh, it's just a preview. It's basically using the proper metal uh, ray tracer, the latest metal ray tracing API, um, to shoot some rays. This is part of basically ray tracing in one weekend. So we have, we have metal and then we have basically diffuse. And as soon as you see, I stop the camera, I start, start converging. You have reflection, fuzzy reflection on the, on the metal sphere here. So it's very basic, just basically to make sure everything is working and everything is accessed bindless. Uh, so I can actually show you. So there is this shader, there's a retracing shader. Basically, the main data structure I feed in is this mesh structure where we have all the buffer, indices, tangents, all the vertex attributes. We have a texture, which I'm not using yet, but I'm going to use in a sec. It was, it was being used in the GLTF sample. We have a matrix, we have a tint color, which is being used. So everything is bindless, which is a requirement to basically simplify your life massively. Um, so next step is basically start working on the proper light mapper. So 
uh, light map UV, generating light map UVs. That is actually what I'm doing here. When I load the GLTF, if I pass the flag that I need the light map UVs, I'm using X Atlas to generate it and so on. That's what I've been working on, but will come later because it's not ready, of course. Um, so this is it. This is the update. Uh, just a quick update on what I've been working on and the code is up on GitHub. See you in the next video.